Today is tennis ball games and challenges. We've got, I think, 10 lined up for you, plus an 11th bonus challenge. So tune in and try these out. All of the drills are gonna be with a tennis ball. You only need one. You don't see Emily because she's behind the camera, but she's here. I'll prove it. <laughs> Each one of the games and challenges that I'm about to demonstrate, you can do them along with me, or you can watch the demonstration and then press pause in your video. Set a timer for anywhere between two to five minutes per, per challenge, per game, and just practice it for the duration of that time. Rest as you need to, um, and just have fun with it. If you do, if there's 10 movements, or if there's 11 movements and you do each one for two minutes, then you get a 22 minute workout. If there's five minutes, then you're, you're still under an hour, it's 55 minutes. So just figure out how much time you wanna put into each one and have some fun with it. Just to get a warm up, we're gonna be tapping the ball like this. So you can just do this if that's enough warm up for you, but you wanna pick up the pace a little bit and try not to move the ball around too much. So you wanna just be tapping it lightly. And the idea is to be as quiet and as light as possible. So if you can barely move the ball, just let it stay in place back and forth. So if you haven't started already, start so you're doing it with me. We're going back and forth. You can circle around the ball, alternate directions. And that's drill number one. Drill number two is getting down into a push-up, touch your chin to the ball, and get back up. So it's kind of like a, a burpee, but we're gonna do it a little bit, with a little bit better quality than those are usually performed. So you're gonna crouch down, get your hands to the floor, shoot your legs back, take your chin, tap the ball, and get back up, okay? If it's too hard for you to do a regular push-up, you can try a few things. You can spread your legs wider, which gives you a little bit more leverage. You can drop your knees to the ground when you touch the ball, which will make it a little bit easier. Lastly, you can also do it on an elevated surface. So you have like a, one of those aerobic aerobic step things, you could put the ball on top of that, or if you have stairs, you could put the ball on stairs so that when you go down, you're doing an elevated push-up. So let's try 10. Alternate which foot you shoot back each time so you're not doing the same one. So one, Two, three. And you can hear, he's as quiet as possible. Four, Making very loud noise. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Feel free to do another ten if you want. is grab punch with the ball. So you stand either in an active stance, like we were during the boxing workout, or you can stand in a parallel stance, whichever one you want, or you can try both. You start with the ball somewhere around nose eye level, and with your fingers pointing out towards the ball, you're gonna grab, punch, and replace the ball. You can actually transition through the stances as well. Now when you're doing this, 
Try not to throw it and catch it. That's not the name of the game. You want to basically replace the other hand. So at the last minute as you're about to grab, you replace the hand. So it's like you're punching the ball out, but you're clasping it with your fingers so it doesn't go flying, okay? Now grab your ball, you can practice slow. Let's do it together. Nice and slow. If the ball goes flying, just go run, grab it, and come back. And then gradually picking up the pace a bit. Try not to keep your arms rigid and only focus on the upper body. Notice that my whole body is contributing to the movement and there's like a softness in my legs absorbing the force. Pick up the pace as fast as you comfortably can. And you can bring in stepping as well. So figure out how to coordinate your step. So as you punch with the left, the right comes up. As you punch with the right, the left comes up. And you can pick up the pace. And get the footwork going. Feel free to press pause on any of these drills and continue practicing them longer than the demonstration. Hey, this is kind of a balancing drill and at the same time you'll find that you'll get some leg workout from it, from going down and up on one leg. You're gonna start on your right leg and use your right hand first. Put the ball down at four positions. So if you had a clock going around, you would be at the 12, the three, the six, and the nine. So you're gonna go down on one leg, place it down, pick it up, go to three o'clock, pick it up, six o'clock behind the heel, and then 9 o'clock inside of the foot. Pick it up. Now the challenge is to stay on the same leg, switch hands, and do the same cycle. So 12 o'clock, 3, reaching across the body, behind the heel, coming from a different angle this time, and the foot. Switch legs. Start on the left hand this time. So you're on the left. Only 12. This time we go counterclockwise. 9. 6. 3. Switch to the right hand. Go in the same direction. Just like to save your balance. And you can try it a couple more times on your own. Lie down. Okay, for this one, you're gonna get on the ground, and the challenge is to pass the ball from between your toes or between your feet to your index fingers, doing like a V up. So let's start with it in the fingers. You go back, touch the ball overhead. You don't have to have your legs totally straight or your arms, you can bend them. But as you come up, you want to just be balancing on your butt, sitting on the ground. So don't, um, don't come up like this with your heels on the ground and then pass it. You want to try to come up with your arms and legs off the ground. 
Put it between your feet and reverse it back down. Come up. Reverse it. And you'll find that just a few of those will probably be fairly challenging and good work up for your core and your abs. So you can do, do a few and then take a rest, do a few more, take a rest. And again, maybe just set a timer for two minutes and do as many as you can until you feel like you can't go. Take a break and then repeat until the two minutes is up. Okay, this drill is getting into and out of the ground using a spiral formation. So if you've been in our general fitness class before, we use movements like this quite often. But we're gonna add in the challenge of keeping the tennis ball balanced on the back of the hand. So figure out where you kind of have to hold the hand in a bit of a shape like this to give it, the ball a place to sit and not let it roll off. So you're going to get down to the ground, pass through kneeling, spiral, so spin on your bum, turn around, pass through the other knee, and get up. Then you can switch hands and reverse it. So you pass through kneeling, pass through sitting, pass through kneeling on the other side, and stand up. And don't let the ball roll off your hand. Now, when I did it that time, I used my other hand as assistance. So you can use the other hand as assistance. Or to make it more challenging, if you get that with the other hand as assistance, you can try it without using the other hand. So you have to be especially conscious of your movement if you're on a hard surface. If you're on grass or um, carpet or something, you can move a little bit more recklessly, but you should still pay attention to how you're moving. Trying to imagine that you're doing it on broken glass. So you're trying to disturb the ground as little as possible. So you come down and you stay com compact. The more you open up and get big, the harder it's gonna be to maneuver your body weight. So you get down, the other hand is no longer being used for assistance. You come around to the other side. You switch sides. Pass through sitting. Spin around. Look at the video and try to figure out what I'm doing. So I'm not gonna walk through step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step instructions because if you constantly rely on step-by-step -step instruction, you don't ever really achieve or learn anything. You never really learn it. You might be able to replicate it by constantly being fed the instructions, but to really learn something, you need to pay attention, observe, and then get a feel for what you're doing. Don't just try to memorize. Try different strategies and see how you can improve your learning because part of this, that's a big part of this, is, is also to improve your learning strategies and how you take in new information, how you respond to new challenges that you're not familiar with. So this isn't the type of thing that you typically see in an exercise class and we enjoy, we really enjoy that. It gives you a new challenge for your brain, new challenge for your body. So have fun figuring it out. Don't immediately get frustrated and then say, oh, this is too difficult for me. I'm just gonna go back to the treadmill or something like that. Have fun with it and enjoy being confused and enjoy the curiosity and the joy of exploring new things and learning how to use your body in new ways, just like a kid again. So if you, don't, if you can't figure it out, you can try it without the ball. Figure out how to get down, spin around, and get up. There's no right and wrong way per se, it's just the right way is the way that 
works and the way that puts the least amount of stress on your body and is the more efficient, the better. So I can get down like this to both knees and then I can put my hands down, turn around, go back to both knees and then pass it through a squat. That's one way, it's not wrong. Another way is to go through, like how I did with the ball, is to go through one knee, spin, and go through the other knee. So I don't want to get too technical because like I said, the trick is to, the idea is to watch the video, learn it, and try to figure it out. But one hint is that circular motions will produce more efficient and more effortless movement. Don't think of moving in straight lines. The more straight lines you move in, the more rigid, now you have nowhere to go. How do you, how do you spin around? You have to pass through circular motions. So if you think of anything in nature, water, the way waves flow, the way snakes sliver on the ground, everything in nature is circular, like spiral in nature. So if, I'm, if I want to enter the ground, I go down in a circular way and it's a lot easier because I can dissipate the force. So I enter the ground, I spin, and I can dissipate the force instead of crashing down. And this is useful in everyday life because if you were to take a fall, for example, and you practice these movements in a playful way, in a safe way, then when you get into a situation where you're doing something and your dog trips you up, like this happened to me before, you're playing and then you fall, you're gonna, you're gonna use a spin to get out. You're gonna do something more natural. Like if uh, babies roll around all the time, dogs, like we do sometimes in a safe way, we'll be playing with Tokyo and we're play fighting and I pick her up from here and toss her a little bit and she rolls, she rolls out of it. She doesn't just fall like a stick person and break. So learn how to soften yourself up and that was a long tangent for this drill but I think it's useful. So practice it, press pause, review, rewind, watch the video again and see if you can do it keeping the ball balanced on the back of your hand. This is one of my personal favorites. We usually do this with a partner, where the partner drops the ball, and you don't know when the partner's gonna drop the ball. So if you're doing this in partners, you can also do it that way. Have the other person hold the ball and drop it, and your objective is to catch it as close to the ground as possible. Okay, so if you're doing it by yourself, you can bounce the ball and react, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, and catch it as close as possible. So I'm going to bounce it and try to catch it right as it's about to hit the ground. And you can see you're in a squat. You're, you can pass through different positions. And you can try catching it like this as well. But this is actually easier, even though I just dropped it twice. It's easier because you can create a safety net kind of for it. But this way, you have to snatch it out of the air before it hits the ground. So try that. Again, set a timer for at least two minutes and practice. Next drill is to start on the ground in a sitting position. So you start just like this first. You're gonna bounce it, get up and catch it standing. So you have to get up before the ball comes back down and catch it. Okay, so you gotta be quick up. You can try it in different positions. So sitting like in this shin box position, bounce. Nope. So you gotta be accurate. If you bounce it and the ball goes away, then it's gonna be harder, you have to chase it down. If you bounce it close to you, 
but high enough you can catch it. You can purposely bounce it a little bit away so that you have to react even more. Just getting straight up is easy, so you can bounce it. So you have to run to get it. Okay? Try that movement game. This next drill is a really good one for runners, especially, but it's good for anybody. It's good for explosive hamstring pulling. So the reason I say it's good for runners is because if you run, efficient running technique is to pull the foot quickly from the ground right underneath the body. And that's kind of the, the movement that we're gonna be mimicking right now. So you're gonna place the ball in between your feet and just try to flick it up behind you, pull it up. Don't necessarily focus on your hamstring muscles, it's a whole body movement, but that's what's really being used a lot is your hamstring muscles. So you're gonna flick it up and try to catch it behind you. Place it between. You wanna get, try to get some good height on it, so instead of sending it out far behind you, you wanna try to keep it as close to you as possible and get height on it and catch it, okay? So it's in between your feet, flick it up and catch. And you can let your dog try to catch it. Ready, sit. Okay, this one is dribbling the ball with your foot. I tried doing this a few different ways and the way that, that I can do it most consistently is the way that I'm about to show you. You can also try this with a basketball, which I think would be easier. I've been able to dribble the ball with my foot using a basketball in more ways, more consistently because it's bigger and it bounces better. You don't have to be as precise. But with a tennis ball, it's pretty small and you have to be pretty precise with it directing the bounce. So just I'll just demonstrate and you can try copying it. So I'm going back and forth from foot to foot and you can see it has kind of a rhythm and a bounce. And if you don't get it going, flick it up and restart it. You can go for height, you can just go for accuracy. I recommend going for accuracy because it can be tricky enough to keep it going for long enough. If you can set the timer for two minutes and keep this going for two minutes without losing your rhythm, I think that would be pretty good. So try it. Stay light on your feet. Stay loose. Give it a try. All right, this is the final drill. Now, it's a bonus challenge. So, you're gonna start with the ball held overhead like this. So both arms are like this in front. You're gonna swing one arm back, like this, and exchange to the other hand. So the, the hand that's swinging is holding the ball. So you swing, touch, swing it back, exchange, swing, touch, back, exchange, swing, touch, back, exchange. So left, swings, touch, Swing back, exchange, swing, touch, back, exchange. Now you want to get it going continuously like this. Okay, so pause the video and try that. And then stage two, 
is to incorporate the footwork. So when I swing one arm back, and I just want you to think of this as walking. It's no more complicated than that. When you walk, if you notice your arms are relaxed and they swing, it's the opposite arm that's, that goes with the opposite leg. It's contralateral movement. Because there's a constant rotating of the belt girding of the waist. So it's the same thing when we do this. When you swing the left arm back, you want the opposite leg to go back if we're bringing the footwork in. You come back, right arm swings back, left foot. So stage one was just the arms. You're still twisting because you need to open up and give the arms a smooth path to glide. Stage two is using the opposite leg. So you have to think, all the joints are, are interconnected. The wrists with the feet, elbows with the knees, and shoulders move with the hips. So when you're doing this, you want to think of the connection between the right wrist, sorry, the right ankle and the left wrist. So as I swing back, they move in unison. I come back, and then it's the right wrist and the left ankle that move in unison. And you want to be loose, get a little bit of bounce to it, and don't forget to exchange the ball. So the arm that swings back is the one holding the ball. Take bigger steps. Where you actually rock back and use the front foot as like a pivot. So you rock back and the toe actually comes up. Because it acts as a brake to pull you back forward. And of course, if that's getting too far ahead, you can always go back to the basics. Okay, give yourself a little more time to practice the bonus challenge. And hope you had fun with this workout. I did. If you can successfully complete all of these games and challenges. Film yourself doing them and send them to us because we would love to see it. Even if you don't get them all perfectly, film yourself doing all of them or some of them and send it to us because it's inspiring for us to see other people putting into practice the different movements and learning. Remember, our slogan is trust the process because it's all about the process. It's not really so important you get it or you don't get it. You're trying to get it, but if you don't get it, it's still okay. You get all the benefits of trying to get it and you'll find that you get quite a workout. Your brain and your body try and follow along and accomplish these tasks. So enjoy.